Hello, it's uh, me. Recently, someone asked whether it is possible to project a 2D scene onto a surface in a 3D scene in Unity. The short answer is yes, and here I'll walk you through one way to do that. I'm going to assume that if you're watching this, you've set up your project using the 2D template, which is not a problem because all of these things are the same Unity, just with different settings. Okay, here we are. I also assume that if you're watching this, you have your own 2D scene set up already. I don't, so I'm going to take a quick moment to set that up. Okay, that is good enough. I've just created a couple of little clouds and a floor with a directional light. Because I don't have any 2D assets on standby, these are all 3D assets which are kind of squished down. All right, so now that we have our 2D scene set up, how do we get it to be in a 3D scene somehow? The first thing to note is that everything that is on screen, everything in our game world, has to be part of one scene. You can't really take one scene and bring it into another scene when we think about the scene as a type in Unity. So, for example, if I call this 2D... Uh, let's just make sure this is saved. If I call this 2D scene... I can't necessarily have another scene that's open and then rendering stuff from this 2D scene. Uh, everything that I'm doing has to be part of one scene itself. So I'm going to call the scene main, and this is going to take everything, this is going to contain everything that I do. So there are two general sections to what we're going to do. The first is set up our scene in a way that the 2D elements are not going to interfere with the 3D elements. The second thing that we're going to do is figure out rendering the 2D elements onto the 3D elements. So because everything is going to be in the same scene, I want to make sure that my main camera, is, that my 2D camera is not rendering the 3D elements and that my 2D lights are not interfering with the 3D lights, etc, etc. So I'm going to rename some of these game objects to include the term 2D. This is just for my sake so that I know that the this is the 2D directional light and this is the 2D camera. And to set this up so that Unity recognizes that this is the 2D camera, first of all, I'm going to untag this as the main camera. So this is no longer the main camera because this is only our 2D camera. The main camera is going to be the 3D camera. The next thing that we're going to do is set up a layer, a new layer called 2D and selecting all of these elements, I'm gonna set this as, all of these as 2D. I was gonna say, do I want to change the children? Yes, everything that is in my 2D scene, I'm going to change to the layer 2D. In fact, what I'm going to do is create an empty object, call it 2D scene, and put everything that's in my 2D scene inside this 2D scene. Change the layer of this parent object to 2D and change the children as well. So I know that everything inside this 2D scene kind of parent root object is going to be part of my 2D scene and also tagged under the layer 2D. And the reason that we've done that is so that we can, under the camera, set the culling mask to 2D. The culling mask means what the camera sees. So if I say nothing, even though everything still exists in my scene, the camera doesn't actually see anything, so all it renders is its background. If I set the culling mask to, for example, transparent effects, right now nothing in my scene has transparent effects as a layer, so it's not rendering anything. Obviously, what we want to do is set this culling mask to 2D, and uncheck transparent effects, so the camera only sees things layered as 2D. I also want to do the same thing for my light. So the light has a culling mask as well. Similar to the camera, this flags what objects in the scene the, this specific light illuminates. Right now, it's everything. I'm going to set it to nothing and then 2D. That's just a quick way of unchecking everything. So now both my camera and my lights only see the things in my 2D scene, the things that I've set up to be 2D. Now that we've set up the 2D scene with the correct layering, I'm going to go ahead and start creating my 3D scene. If this is new to you, moving out of the 2D viewport and into the 3D viewport is very simple. In the top left-hand corner of the scene window, 
there is a little button that says 2D. If you click that, now your scene is a 3D scene and you can move around it as if you were navigating a 3D scene in Unity, which you are. Because my 2D scene is encapsulated within this parent object, I can move the parent far off to the side and it will move my entire scene, my two, all of my 2D elements with it. This is purely, I'm going to move it out of the way, so 100 along X, purely so that it's not interfering with the, any 3D elements that I create. And I'm gonna set up a very quick 3D scene with, let's just say a cube, a camera, and a, um, and a light. I'll need to move my camera a little bit out so that it sees the cube and I can rotate the cube just to show, whoops, that's the light. I can rotate the cube just to show that it is a 3D scene. So one thing to note is when I created this camera, this is now my most recently selected camera. So this is what's gonna be appearing in the camera end game preview window. Because this is my 3D camera, I'm going to rename it my 3D camera and I'm going to tag it as my main camera just for future reference. So now we have a little 3D scene with a cube, a camera, and a light. I want to make sure that these are not interfering with the 2D scene that I created earlier. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the 2D scene regarding layers. So with my 3D camera selected, uh, under culling mask, it's gonna see everything except the 2D layer. So I'm gonna uncheck that 2D layer. Same with the light. So the light is going to under culling mask, affect everything except the 2D layer. Which means that now, if I bring that 2D scene back into the sort of view of this camera, even though the camera, even though the scene is right in front of this 3D camera, it's not seeing it. It's only seeing the things that it's supposed to see. So once again, I'm only moving the 2D scene out of the way so that it's not cluttering up the center of my world. It doesn't actually matter because of our layering if it's directly overlapping. So that's the end of the first section, ensuring that the 2D and the 3D worlds don't overlap or interfere with each other. And to be super explicit, I'm going to create a root called 3D scene and put all of my 3D elements inside that. Now I have a 2D scene collection of objects and a 3D scene collection of objects. Now the question is, how do we render that 2D scene onto something in our 3D scene? One way that we can do this is by using a render texture, which is a type of object in Unity. So if we say create and then render texture, and I'll call this 2D, oops, 2D projection. A render texture is a way for a camera to render not to the screen, but to a new texture. And that updates every frame. If we look at the settings for the 2D projection render texture, by default, the size is pretty small, 256 by 256. So that's gonna be a really small texture uh, and it might look a little bit pixelated if you get up close. It's also a square. And if you want this texture to be some sort of screen in your world, you might not be using a square aspect ratio. So I'm gonna bump this up to about 1280 by 720. You could up that to 1080 if you wanted, but that's just gonna be a little bit more expensive and might start slowing things up if your target platform is a mobile. So now that we've created this texture, we need to connect it to a camera. So in our 2D scene, I'm going to se select my 2D camera and under target texture in the camera settings, we can either drag and drop the 2D projection in or click the little target and select our 2D projection. This is gonna tell this 2D camera, instead of rendering to a screen, render to this texture. Every frame, this texture is gonna be updated with whatever's in our 2D scene. Now that we've got that set up, we can apply it to an object in our 3D scene. I'm gonna assume that you're applying this to some sort of plane, but you can apply it to any object that can take a material. So I'll angle this plane towards the camera, move it back a little bit, rotate it, just so that it has some 3D depth to it. And the texture needs a material to apply it to an object. Uh, so we could create our own material and then apply the texture. But uh, recently I discovered a quick way to do that is drag the texture onto whatever object you wanted to apply to. And there we've got our 2D scene. So one thing, it's coming upside down for some reason. 
uh, we could figure out why, but I'm just going to flip that around. The other thing to note is that it seems a little bit squished, and that's because when we created our 2D texture, we gave it a resolution, an aspect ratio that was not one by one. And our plane is obviously one by one by one. So if we look at the axes of this plane, it seems as though X is the width and then Z is the height. So I'm going to change my scale to 1.6 by 0 0.9, and that's now a 16 by 9 image. And that's pretty much all we have to do. We've now got this render texture inside our 3D scene. Oh, one thing to note, the material that was created came into this materials folder, so now I've got a materials inside a materials folder, which I didn't really like that much, so I'll drag that 2D projection into my main materials folder and just delete this empty folder. Cool. Other things that we can do is if we wanted this to actually be a square aspect ratio, we could change the render texture, the projection, we could change the render texture's size back to uh, 2D projection, which, if I f recall correctly, we might need to update the camera or play. Yes, you need to uh, press play for that to update. And now that we've got a square aspect ratio, we can apply the, we'll have to turn the plane back to one by one by one for it not to be stretched out, but we could apply this material to the cube, for example. And now we've got the render texture applied on all sides of the cube. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope this helped, and I still don't have a sign-off, so uh, I guess that's it. Bye.